The views and opinions of this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Today's program brought to you by... So she didn't inherit Grandpa's jawline, but there's no doubt she's family. It's your job to raise her, and it can be tough. Let's make it easier. With technology and automation, you can do more. Like produce high-quality bales with way less effort. Built-in sensors can miss your bale moisture and size, so you can monitor quality on the go and manage your fleet from your phone. Sit back and enjoy effortless operation. Discover an easier way to work. Well, how is that continued harvest weather looking here in the U.S.? Will we finally get some rain to some dry areas of the country? Meantime, some new long-range outlooks that we need to take a look at as we think about the winter months ahead and more. Joining us here on Market Talk, brought to you by John Deere for our weekly weather update, Eric Stodgrass with Nutrient Ag Solutions. And Eric, good to catch up with you again this week, my friend. Let's start with that harvest weather here in the U.S. I know we've had a pretty warm and dry stretch for many. But we've had a cold front that's been working through. We're going to see some rain get into some dry areas of the country. What are you seeing here this week, Eric? Well, I mean, the warm stretch has been unreal since, uh, gosh, September 10th up until even today. <clears throat> when you look at the rank of the temperatures, it's number one for the Midwest, Upper Midwest, Northern Plains, Canadian Prairie. Now, we finally saw some change. A front snuck through the Northern Plains yesterday. It's come through the Midwest now. There's even some decent rain in Iowa as you know as we watch this front come through. But uh, temperatures behind it are like 35 degrees cooler than they were yesterday at this time. So a nice little cool down, but does it last? Uh, no. We're going to rebound pretty quickly by the end of the week in some of those regions. But, you know, I'm, I'm just wanting to see how much of that rain gets through the, the Corn Belt because on Sunday, the winds were pretty strong across the Midwest. And we saw numerous uh, field fires as a result, just how dry it has been. We've got several climate reporting districts from Western Illinois through Indiana, <clears throat> all the way into uh, uh, Ohio, all the way into the Northeast that are still looking at like the driest stretch of days when you compare the last 133 years for August 1st up until today, like the driest, the driest for that time period. So what I'm worried about, Jesse, is the front that's coming through might leapfrog over parts of Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and then reinvigorate as it gets over, well, you, honestly, toward uh, Kentucky and Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And the benefit for you all is that this past weekend, a little tropical pulse moved over Florida into the Gulf Coast area, and some of that moisture is coming up the Mississippi River. It's not a, not a big spinny thing. It's just a little bit of moisture. You're going to squeeze it a little harder than we will be able to, and you're going to pull some moisture out of that. And there might, there might be a spot in Tennessee, Kentucky uh, that picks up two and a half, three inches of rain in the next uh, 60 hours from, from this. So I'm jealous because I'd like to have it here just to knock the dust down and to uh, prevent more of these fires. Now, harvest pace has been very rapid. I mean, it's wide open and folks have been going and we're just taking a look at, uh, you know, where, where, where the next 10 days are going to put down rain. And overall, it's not a wet pattern uh, through the next 10 days for a lot of the Midwest. So, yeah, we are going to be waiting and waiting on better flow to get in here to start to revive things. Well, and I think about this and, you know, you and I were chatting about, you know, when is the fall like weather going to get here? But, you know, the way things are trending, we might jump from summer to winter here, possibly. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. But, you know, uh, you mentioned to me some new long range models thinking about the winter months ahead. And I know that's yeah. a ways off, but could that be our next best potential to bust some of this drought longer term, Eric? Well, it might have to be the seasonal transition that gets us there because right now the tropics in the Atlantic, yeah, there's another system that's expected to form, but it's the same narrative we've had now for six weeks, Jesse. I mean, the, the Bermuda high is over by the Azores, which means that tropical system gets pulled out to open ocean, just like Aaron and Gabrielle and Imelda and Umberto, like all of them, Fernand, they all just stay out to open ocean. There is some hopes, honestly, of a tropical system named Priscilla that could deliver its moisture, but it's in the southwestern United States. It could get the Colorado River Basin, could get some moisture in the plains, but for us, we may have to wait later. Now, there are some things that are changing. We have finally seen a forecast that's attempting to take what we call the global atmospheric angular momentum. It's just a measurement of the flow of the atmosphere. 
it's finally starting to, to ramp it up a bit. And by the end of the month, we're expecting it to, to, to shoot back up to average. It's been way below average now for 60 days. And if it does do that, then you will see a much, much different end of October and November than what we've experienced since August. Now, we're just going to sit here and patiently wait for that to change. But what it's going to take is a trough to finally leave the Western you know, or, or the, the Pacific, the Western United States, and get to the midsection of the country with some sort of earnest. And what will likely happen, Jesse, is that not only will it bring in rain, but it'll probably bring in a late season severe storm threat. And it will start to usher in more routine, cooler uh, air coming through. But, you know, your bigger question was, well, what is this symptomatic of something larger to talk about? Mm -hmm. And some of the new model data just came out yesterday. And it's from the Europeans are always the first to kind of release their long range forecast at the beginning of the month. And they have got, um, you know, a, a, a La Nina brewing that will likely reach what we would call weak status, not a big, powerful La Nina but it's important to understand that weak ones that peak right before Christmas and then die tend to give us, to be honest with you, drop busting winters. And my narrative from now, honestly, all the way to April is what does the drop monitor look like by April? Because it's 70% coverage in D0 to D4 drought right now. So all five categories, 70% coverage across the country. And I want to see what it looks like in April to tell me if there's threats for 2026. So long story short, this could be a fun winter. Now, fun for me. Most people don't like it when we have fun winters as meteorologists. <laughs> but I, I, based off what I know today, I think there's going to be good snows in the Rocky Mountains, good snows in the Cascades, even parts of the Sierra Nevada. I think we're going to have multiple good systems digging through the Ohio Valley. And that's, that's good for everyone involved uh, in, in this country in ag if we can get a good winter to set up. Now, there's a little bit of wish casting in my tone, if you can't tell, because the last few winters have been very odd. I mean, last winter, brutally cold, January, February, but no snow in the Midwest. It was all, mm -hmm. you know, in New Orleans. So I wonder if we're going to get a flavor of that this winter like we did last winter. Because to be honest with you, the strongest analog for winter 2025-26 right now is winter 2024-25. But analogs... There's no such thing as a perfect analog. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> well, uh, we'll wait on fully getting our snowblowers ready just yeah, yeah. yet. But it's <laughs> something to keep at the back of our minds here over the next several weeks. <laughs> Ed. Let's talk South America as we uh, get ramped up with their planting season in Brazil and Argentina and more. What's the latest weather situation there? Well, in the last week or so, we've had good rains from northern Argentina through Paraguay, Uruguay, and southern Brazil. Okay, but the Cerrado, you know, the main growing area in in northern and central Brazil has been drier. We this was well anticipated and well forecast. Uh, but what it did was, following the rains in late September, this wide open this wide open dry stretch meant fast planting. And you, I'm sure you've seen some of the numbers, but Mato Grosso is planting at the fastest pace they've planted in the last five years, probably beyond that too. And uh, they're taking advantage of these this window now because. And I imagine that a lot of them are watching the same model battle that I'm watching. They're looking very carefully at the uh, differences between the GFS and the European. And I guarantee you they're all rooting for the European model because it's still dry for the next five to seven days. Then after day seven, it just brings a rain. So if they can rapidly plant and then good good rain for germination, it's going to be a it's going to be a fast start, and we're not going to be talking about them being you know seventy five percent planted by the end of October, but like ninety percent planted if that comes true. Now, if you would like to take a much different uh, approach to this, then you want to use the U.S. model called the GFS because it's not bringing that rain in. It is dry for the next two weeks. In fact, it's trying to stay dry all the way to the fifth through the tenth of November. So you have one model that's trying to bring in a bunch of extra rain. That's the European model. Better statistical performer overall. Did well for the September and early October rain. And then you've got the GFS. That is a U.S. model, not high on as a performer statistically as the European. But it's like, no, 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 no. No monsoonal, no flow, nothing. It's going to be an early, early drought. And everyone goes, well, which one do you trust, Eric? I'm like, well, I, I always just default to statistics. There's no reason not to. So I'm going to look at that European and look at the current planting pace and assume that the Brazilians are going to go after it. And yeah, that's the story I've got for South America. 
Anything else final you would share with folks yeah. on the weather this week? Good, good. I'm glad you asked because, you know, I just gave you the, the winter forecast for North America. That same long range forecast is trying to paint drought in Southern Brazil and Argentina for the middle of their summer. Now that's common with a La Nina. Uh, we have to wait to see if it actually manifests itself. But remember, when you look at variance or variability in yield and production out of South America, most of it comes from Southern Brazil. It's, it's very steady in central and northern Brazil because it's the tropics. It's a monsoon. It just goes. So if there's going to be a problem, we typically look for southern Brazil to show us the problem or we look into Argentina and knowing how much, you know, not just gl global politics and, and, and grain trade is laser focused on some things happening in Argentina right now. We need to know if uh, if they're going to end up having some trouble with drought. So good question there. Yeah, well, I know folks can stay up to date with all the trends and more information from you and your team there at Nutrient Ag Solutions. Agweather.com, ag-wx.com for more. Eric Snodgrass, Nutrient Ag Solutions. Thanks for joining us here on Market Talk. Appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at Market Talk Egg and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube.